Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about the long-term implications of the home affordability crisis. Ownership in real estate is expensive, and the cost is rising faster than incomes are increasing. Back in the late 1970s, when we had the last major bout of inflation, there was a massive erosion of household purchasing power. Single-income households were common back then, but as prices increased, it became necessary for many households to rely upon two incomes. It used to be the case that the average person who worked in the trades or as a factory worker or a school teacher could afford to buy a detached single-family home. That's no longer the case. A lot's been written about the erosion of the middle class. With the current pricing in the market, homes are not affordable for first-time buyers trying to make it on their own in many markets. That begs the question. If these homes are not affordable, and yet they're continuing to sell at higher and higher prices, then they're clearly affordable to someone, otherwise they wouldn't be selling. When buyers are offering over asking price on a home, it's hard to blame the seller for a high asking price. Affordability comes down to answering a simple question. Do you have the household income to afford the monthly cost of ownership and the equity to afford the down payment? With interest rates so low for the past decade, buyers with two incomes can afford a stunningly large loan. But if you need to save $100,000 for a down payment in order to afford that starter home, how on earth are you going to come up with hundred grand? That is, if you're a first-time buyer. In many cases, young adults are borrowing the down payment from their parents. After a couple of years of home ownership, they sell their first house, pocket the appreciation, and use the proceeds from the sale as the down payment for the second home. Each time, the equity gain goes to the homeowners, and they can invest the sale proceeds into a bigger and better property. But if you can't borrow hundred grand from your parents or a rich uncle, what do you do? Well, there's always the high ratio loan offerings from FHA in the U.S. and CMHC in Canada. In those instances, you might bring as little as maybe twenty or thirty thousand in cash to the table and borrow the rest. After a few years in that first home, you should be able to sell the property for a modest profit and recirculate the profit into another higher value property. At that point, you want to make sure that your new equity will get you out of the high ratio loan into a conventional loan with at least 20% down payment. Real estate does fluctuate temporarily up and down in price. Down happens when credit markets tighten up. If credit markets become too tight, then economic contraction happens and the central banks respond, eventually with looser monetary policy in order to be stimulative to the economy. There will be a period of price reduction, in my opinion, in the real estate market if interest rates rise too quickly and to a level that impacts affordability for a very large percentage of existing homeowners. But history has shown us that these periods are relatively short-lived. Maybe the exception to that was the Great Depression from 1929 to 1939. So if you're a first-time homebuyer watching yourself getting priced out of the market, what should you do? Should you jump into the market now even though you think the property you want to buy is priced out of reach? My advice is simple. Don't bet against inflation. We have experienced inflation erode the value of the dollar for the past 110 years. We've seen inflation throughout history result in asset price inflation as well. Yes, prices are going up, but what if your income actually goes up? What if your income was 20% higher than it is today? Would you afford the house that you want with 20% more income? What would it take for you to get 20% more income or 25% more income? Well, many people are choosing to take advantage of the current employment environment to do just that. They're choosing to take a new job, relying on their existing skill set at a significant increase in salary. The affordability crisis is real, and I believe the prices have risen too far too fast, but the shortage of homes is also real. For investors, I believe that the product to fill the affordability gap is the rental townhouse product. People who want to live in a single-family home and can't afford it are going to rent out of necessity. They don't want to rent a box in the sky up on the 15th floor of a high-rise building. They want a single-family home experience, and a townhouse lives like a single-family home. It has a rear yard where the kids can play. And for the foreseeable future, this product is going to be in very high demand at rents that make sense for investors to build. And that begs the obvious question. If an investor can build a townhouse and rent it to a tenant who can afford the rent, then why is that same home out of reach for the tenant to buy? Well, the answer is simple. The commercial investor who's a portfolio borrower can afford the down payment to put together that entire project, where maybe the individual homeowner may not necessarily have the discipline or the ability to raise the capital for the down payment. And it's that lack of knowledge to bring the equity to the table that is going to keep a lot of people out of the home ownership game. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.